Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditec, C2 at DVS, and today we're going to take a look at a brand new product from Hype Vision. This wonderful new PTZ. So a PTZ with a camera built into the head. Weird, I know, but it is actually a really cool concept. So we're going to fit this on the outside of the DVS building to see what advantages advantages this give. So as ever, thank you for all your likes, subscribes, comments, etc. Please do keep on doing that. And thanks to Toshiba for sponsoring our channel. So what does this new PTZ look like? Let me just get it out. So for those of you that want to know the model number, the model number is Delta Sierra hyphen 2 Sierra Echo 7 Charlie 124 Indigo Whiskey hyphen Alpha Echo. There we go. Ta -da. So it is a 4 megapixel 32 times optical zoom model with a 4 mm uh, built in static camera. And the idea being is. Once I can get it out. Hello. So inside the box, you get the PTFE tape, waterproof uh, tape to go around the connections, manual. You get the lifting handle to help assist you put that up on the building. Waterproof glands, really important you fit that on all of our products. You get the adapter plate. So you can fit this from a standard height vision camera, so it's bayonet fitting, and that goes into a did <laughs> goes into a threaded swan neck. So Wack and Ultron here in the UK do a threaded swan neck option. So the adapter comes in the box which allows you to go between either the height vision bayonet fitting or the traditional threaded mount. So that is your choice. So PTZ itself, here you go. It's not as big as you probably thought it was, but you can see here, very satisfying. You've got your built-in static camera. Um, you've got a 4mm fixed lens in there, it's got the active deterrent lights in there I believe so we need to fit this so we can understand what this can actually provide. But it has also got built in speaker, the flashing white lights etc so in theory this should be an active deterrent camera. The 4mm fixed lens, should, you should be able to set up a VCA so when somebody triggers it the PTZ is not looking in the right way which is quite common for a PTZ because of the multifunction role it can provide and therefore that should drive that either back to the area or provide smart tracking, I believe. So we're gonna go and fit this and see how we get on. You have a safety chain, quite a nice safety chain. The product weighs about, I don't know, four kilograms, five kilograms. Um, it's not very heavy. On the fly lead itself, you have the PUE connection, you have your alarm input output plus your 24 volt AC connection if you want to use that. Other than that, we're gonna go fit this outside and see what it looks like. So stay tuned while we do a little bit of fitting and we come back and see what it looks like on the web browser. So this is the new PTZ with the built-in fixed camera. Not as bad as you thought it was, especially from the image. It's a lot better looking than I was expecting anyway. So we'll get that fitted and we'll come back shortly. Cheers. Okay, so the PTZ is now fitted. It's outside on our lovely car park. But to give you an overview of the PTZ, you can see 2 megapixel, 32 times optical zoom with infrared, plus flashing white light and speaker. You can see the speaker grill there for the audio deterrent. You can see the fixed lens camera, 4 megapixel, 4 millimeter lens there, which we can use to trigger the VCA, or we can use it for panorama tracking, which we will show you shortly. So, it's powered by Dark Fighter. Um, what else has it got? WDR, HRC, BLC. It's got smart tracking that's uh, activated by panorama um, tracking, which is the fixed lens static camera built in, which is really powerful, which we'll show you shortly. It's got the audio visual alarm, like we've already mentioned, so the active deterrent. And um, basically, all of the other standard PTZ functions. And you can see if I just scroll down, pick anything you like out of that. And there we go. Okay, so moving on to the PTZ, a 150 meter IR distance, and it is PoE um, compatible as well. There we go. So let's pull up the actual view of the PTZ. So two channels, PTZ plus static. So if we press play, wait for them to load. 
So again, PTZ two megapixels. So still, it's a you know nearly eight o'clock era DVS, but still a perfectly good image. And the four megapixel wide angle four millimeter panoramic fixed lens camera, which we're going to use to one trigger the audio visible deterrent alarm, which is this blue box here, and the panorama tracking. So into configuration. You can see full model number. This is currently the latest firmware here, but always do check that you are on the latest firmware when installing and configuring the product. So standard web browser function. So the reboot upgrade default, etc. log system service and security audit log security functions. If you want to change those from the defaults, user management network. So again, standard network functions. Let's put another alternative DNS in there. Um, supports DDNS, PPPoE, port, NAT, multicast, etc. So I can enable that. And click enter. Advanced settings. We can go to platform access. Um, if you add in this to Hike Central, you use ISAP, which is different to Hike Connect. So you enable the ISAP protocol, fill in the appropriate details of the server address of the Hike Central, plus your key, and then that would link to Hike Central rather than using the Hike Connect method. Currently, on this firmware, there is no Hike Connect option. It is something I fed back to see moving forward if we are able to support this product through Hike Connect. Integration protocols. Uh, so if you're adding this to you know a third-party system, so it's the Hike Vision CGI and Onvif. Network service, HTTP listening, TPC acceleration, and traffic shaping. Video and audio, you'll have two channels that you can enable on the video and audio. So camera one is the PTZ, camera two is the fixed lens. So four megapixel, 15 frames a second, H265 is on. And again, H265 is on on the PTZ. I don't prefer to use H265+, plus. I find it adds more issues than it resolves. Especially when the scene's busy, I think it can create additional issues. Audio, so it has got a line in. Um, if you want to connect a, uh, you know, a microphone, external microphone into that, you can connect it in, adjust the audio encod encoding format, and then you can obviously also increase the input volume. Output volume is the uh, built-in speaker, so we'll put that up to 100%. Region of interest and display info display info on stream enter that image that just puts like the SDK details now I've set camera one and camera two to outdoors because they are obviously outdoor uh, installed outdoors again you've got preset scenes so if I choose one of these scenes here it then predetermines the settings on the right hand side so you can either choose one of the preset scenes choose a custom and then set that or just adjust it as necessary to your application generally the scenes in there um, are perfectly adapted to the installation that you are using exposure settings again you can go and adjust them Focus, semi-auto, day-night switch. I put these into day mode permanently. There is additional light in here in the DVS compound and out onto the uh, public highway. So there is no need to keep these into infrared mode. So they are kept permanently in day mode. Backlight settings, white balance, image enhancement. There for your adjustment pleasure. Again, with camera two, you can adjust it. It's pre set to outdoor. Again, permanently in day mode. But again, all of the same settings that apply to the PTZ, you can adjust for the static camera. And then you have your OSD on-screen display settings, so you can adjust your time and date, your name of the PTZ, move it around, and size of text, etc. You have image parameter switch, so again, you can link to presets or a schedule switch. So if period one between that time and that time, you need to change it to that scene, enable that, and then period two between another time, link it to a different scene. So the PDZ will then follow preset scenes uh, for the image parameters, and you can do that for camera one and camera two, or even perhaps link it to a preset. Now under PTZ, uh, standard PTZ control, so we've got the maximum tilt angle I put to minus 15, so it's a negative up tilt. Um, some of the PTZ support minus 20, and this is only minus 15, which is standard for the uh, DF range. 
the DEDF range, um, but some do support the minus 20. Uh, we've got the limit, so you can actually limit it if you want to put manual stops in there to stop it looking at a perhaps there's a, a housing development and you don't want the operator to physically be able to turn around there you can enable the limit and then set the stops which stops the ptz going past those limits initial position that's its boot up so if it does a boot up it will then um you know go to this initial position park action now i've enabled park action i've put the park time as 30 seconds so it can you can control it leave it go and after 30 seconds it will go back to its preset one which is the main entrance uh, viewing which you saw there um, again it'll only smart track up to a maximum of 30 seconds because the park action is a higher priority than the tracking so therefore with the park time is 30 seconds it'll track for 30 seconds maximum and then go back to its park position but again different uh, actions are available for that park action it's a very standard function we have privacy mask if you want to set a privacy mask again more for uh, residential areas or areas of high sensitivity schedule task in schedule task again most of our ptz's enable this schedule task you can have different times of the day you can set a different parameter for a different time of the day to fit your application very very simple but very powerful clear config and again the park time if you have that as five seconds and the schedule task enabled then that the park time will always go back to five seconds so you may need to adjust that five second time there you can clear all the config if you're having any issues and start again panorama tracking now i've already enabled this because it does take a couple of minutes to do the calibration now the easiest way to do the calibration is the auto calibration mode all you need to do is under calibration mode, set it to auto, which is the default, click start calibration, and then it will go count up between zero and 100%, and then a tag will come down in the bottom right-hand corner to say uh, calibration succeeded. Click on that. It might do a couple of processes. So it might go between 30, 50, and 70%, depending on the complexity of the scene. But basically, the start calibration, let it do its thing, click calibration succeeded, then it should have come up with 100%, you can then enable track mode, click save. Anyone that comes in this uh, field of view, um, you'll see then a red box with a human or a vehicle um, present, and then the PTZ will track that object. So very, very simple. I would always use the panorama tracking first, uh, the auto tracking calibration first, but you are able to set it to manual and manually calibrate that using the points if needed. Again, if you need any help, up, help on the top right hand corner and you should find the manual there where you can follow the uh, process for manual and auto calibration. So I won't do it, as I've already done it, it does take a few minutes so rather than subject you to waiting for that, um, I, I won't um, do it now because I've already done it. What you can do is set the track in initial position um, if you want. Again, I've got a park preset, so it'll go back to his park preset. And then when anyone um, comes in this area, it'll start tracking. So I'm happy to use it in that scenario. The one thing that you will need to set is the tracking duration. So it can only be at the maximum of the park preset if you're enabling park preset. If you don't have a park preset enabled um, or a park time enabled, you can actually set that up to a maximum of 60 seconds um, of tracking but I put it to 30 seconds, which follows the park time. Set zoom ratio. So you can zoom this in, the PTZ. So if I want a close-up shot for the tracking, that's a bit too much. A bit more. Depends if you want a wide or close-in tracking shot. So let's do it a little bit more. And then go set zoom ratio, say you succeeded. What that'll do now is when you start tracking the PTZ, will zoom into that sort of distance to the object. So again, the further in you set that zoom ratio, the more detail you'll get, but it'll be closer on the object and you, you won't see what's going on around it. So it's kind of a trade off between having the object very, very close or having it um, a bit of a wider shot to see what's going on around there. Okay. So we're happy with that. Very simple process. Click save and we're happy to move on. Again, the manual's in there. Auto calibration should be the old default method. Uh, but again, you can do it a manual one if required. We also support rapid focus. So with the rapid focus, 
you can start calibrating and then stop the calibration. But basically what the um, rapid focus allows you to do is if it's jumping between presets, by the time it gets to the presets or a scene, the camera will already be in focus. So it doesn't have to go to a preset and then start its focus, which can take, you know, a couple of seconds and then you lose some of the, maybe some of the action or the detail that you require. So rapid focus, you set this up between points. So when it when you say the, the best analogy is when you're using a preset tool, when it gets to that preset, the camera is already in focus by this rapid focus um, calibration process. So it is a really handy um, process. I've done a separate video on that if you want to go and, and, and view that. And a lot of the modern PTZs already support this rapid focus um, solution. Okay, so moving on to event. So we've got motion detection, uh, standard, pretty standard function in all our products now. Um, alarm input, linkage method. So with the alarm inputs, this PTZ has two alarm inputs, and you can also link the flashing alarm and audible warning to that. Flashing alarm light output. So for 15 seconds on a trigger, high frequency, and you can adjust it um, to oh, just a static, low flashing, medium or high, and then the brightness, and this is a 24 seven action. So if it sees the event, this is always active, so can then flash. Audible alarm output. So again, different options. So under warning, which is the default, you can pick one of these preset ones. Um, we've already just picked one, click test, and then that will do a test output of that camera. Uh, through the speaker alarm times how many times it plays that message on activation so three times plus the uh, audible is 24 7 active what you can do is change it to prompt um, prompt is like an alarm tone so it's like a beeping sound and um, quite ineffective or you can put custom audio point it to your own custom audio file and then add download and add that uh, so it could be that you know, you want to create a, your own welcome or warning message, you know, different language or different way of saying it. So again, we support all three methods. And the smart event, we have audio exception detection. So you can connect an external microphone in and have the loss of detection or increased sound or decreased sound, etc. Intrusion detection. So up to four areas of intrusion and line cross. So I've enabled it. I've drawn my area here. Arm in schedule is 24 seven and linkage method is trigger the flashing alarm and audible warning. So any detection in this area, trigger the light and audible warning. That's the fixed lens and that's where you set it up, you know, for the VCA side. Again, maximum and minimum object size, your detection area. So I can have more than one detection area. I can have up to four. Um, and then do I want to detect human vehicles or other? So well, basically everything. Threshold is one. Again, the threshold time an object has to be in there for one or more seconds before the alarm is generated. And you can put that up to a maximum of 10 seconds. And sensitivity is left at 50. We find that works well for most applications, but can be adjusted as needed. So simple VCA setup with the human and vehicle uh, filter in. Line cross, exactly the same. So if you want to use a line or a combination of intrusion boxes and lines, up to four and exactly the same process applies. And again, region entrance and region exit detection also able you to you know define your areas and the process that you want. Very simple to set up. And the storage, you can put an SD card in there or a network hard drive. And then you can have it record into the SD card plus the NVR. Um, for camera one or camera two. And we also do the um, timing. So if you want to do timing for time lapse, you can use that, you know, for, you know, progress of a construction site or building project, or whatever. Very, very simple. So that's that. So let's transfer you to Internet Explorer because Mozilla seems to take a while. So go to live view. Now, I'm not sure if anyone's gonna be coming in right now. There we go, so the PTZ is tracking. So you can see on the right hand side there, it's picked up the human and it's tracking that human very well. Now it's picked up another target, now it's moved to Kyle. Now the car will be detected after that's timed out. 
You can only track one object at a time, guys. So obviously, if there's lots of movement in the area, it is going to track um, the most appropriate object because obviously, if two people go two separate ways, the PTZ can't then, um, you know, move to, to two different people. But what the beauty of this is, whilst the PTZ is tracking or doing a tour, you've also got this fixed lens view here, which enables you to always have this under constant surveillance, even though the PTZ might be off doing tracking or looking at something else. So it's still a very, very powerful process. Uh, is anybody else going to come in? No. So I'll take my camera outside now and show you the the tracking and the uh, light and audible sound through the camera so you're in front of it so you can see it. But hopefully you get the idea. After 30 seconds, this will time out and go back to its park preset. And then again, once somebody comes into this site here, the um, object will be tracked. So let me go and transfer you over. Okay, so but before I actually go outside, it's probably a good idea that I show you the playback. So obviously this got fitted a couple of days ago. So this is from uh, midnight last night. So PTZ and static. So you can see they're absolutely lovely images. If I make that full screen, two megapixels, still a really acceptable image. And then even clearer on the four megapixel static. If I go to... When I came in, we should see us tracking a little better. So I think I got here about seven o'clock ish, maybe a little bit later. Okay, so. Here we go. So you can see I've triggered, that's me coming into the office now. So what you should find is this should pick, detect me and this PTZ should drive around there. I need to set the initial position up for that. Drove in there. Yep, curb it. And there we go. So that's the tracking from this morning. Um, I need to adjust it slightly from that uh, initial position. I set the initial position, which is why it flew off a little bit. But I'll adjust that so it lines up with the park breezer. Other than that, let me go and transfer you outside so you can see. Okay, so I'm outside, it's raining, but that's okay. So the PTZ is fitted on the outside of the building already. Morning. Attention, please. The area is under surveillance. So you can see. Attention, please. The area is under surveillance. Please notice that the area is under surveillance. Attention, please. The area is under surveillance. So there you go, so that's the, the audio and the flashing light and obviously you've seen the tracking already. A um, bit difficult to show you the tracking when I'm outside but you know the, the view doesn't lend itself to that. But that's the PDZ fitted outside, works really well. If you've got any questions don't forget ask your DVS salesperson um, or ask DVS at dvs.co.uk. Wherever you are stay safe and we'll see you next week for another how-to video. Say bye Mike. Bye Mike.